Hi, Hi, Pro here. Welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. On today's episode, we're gonna find out what in the world happened there. All oh, right, okay, yeah. Uh, and I saw her living there, or not living. <laughs> yeah, I saw her living there. A dead person is a zombie. Oh, a zombie. A woman not moving, dead. Okay. Quailed and fright. Oh yeah, I should probably look at my evidence. Time of death, 4 to 5 p.m. Wait. Oh, wait. Um... Okay, call the police immediately. Phone apartment wasn't working. Went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Time exactly, it was 1 p.m. Wait a second. The time of death was not 1 p.m. Uh, I, 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 object, I object. You found the body at 1 p.m., you're sure? Well, yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Hmm, ouch, my hands. Frankly, I find that hard to believe, and if my name isn't Frank, and it isn't. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. I mean, this is the tutorial level, so it's... I, I, you know, I would imagine it's going to be pretty easy to <laughs> find a contradiction. Some of the later ones, I have to really use my noggin, especially for the ones that I didn't watch on the Game Grumps. Uh, the autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. <laughs> How do you explain this three-hour gap? I, I took a really long time to go to the phone. Oh, that, oh, uh, we shimmy a little bit and think about it. Uh, uh, detection, this is trivial, though it is really forgot the time. Mm, no, that's not, it's not trivial. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sart, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? Was it because you killed them? I, uh, I, uh, well, I, uh, gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions and put them on the spots. We're gonna run out of spots in, at this rate. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Except when it doesn't, in, like, later cases. Uh, wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again and come up with lies? Just a... I was gonna say some more lies, but then I didn't put in the a more, so it was like slies. The time of discovery. The time of discovery. And I hope it out of you. Okay. Uh, you see, when I found the body, I heard the time. Okay. There was a voice saying the time was probably coming from the television. Why would they say the time on the television? That's weird. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. It's awfully convenient. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Very convenient. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. Ah, I've got this one. Wait, what do I do? I, I forgot. Uh, time of discovery. Okay, found the body, heard the time. It's voicing the time, probably coming from the television. Um. Oh wait, no, but the... How could it come from television? The power's out. Objection. Yeah, I object to that. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. Woo! Hmm, slap. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Gah! <laughs> Gah, you will irk. You irk, do you? Uh, I objection! The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sart? No, I uh, find it quite puzzling myself, quite. Uh, uh, ah, oh, my, my hair just popped out of my head. Wait, I remember now. 
Mr. Saad, the court will prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. So take this time to think of more lies. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you will seem rather distraught. Uh, uh, my apologies, Your Honor. It uh, must have been the shock of finding the body. Mm, very well, Mr. Saad, even though... The, you know, it's not like we took you directly from the body to here. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Or maybe they did. I don't know. Alright, a third... <laughs> I don't know how they're lying in a third testimony. Alright, here we go. Oh, actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. Well, he didn't fully... Okay, well, first of all, objection. You didn't go into the building, or into the room, because you were too shocked, right? Do I have anything about that? Um... A uh, table clock in the apartment... I uh, wasn't there. Yeah, the murder weapon, the killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. Hmm. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. Mm, that explains it. The defense may cross-examine. Gladly! Okay, so I don't know what evidence I can use to say... Maybe the autopsy report or something. And here, the time I saw it... Um... There's a table clock in the apartment. Oh, wait, what? There was a table clock in the apartment. What? Oh, yeah, he's like, wasn't there? Like, recollecting, right? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. Um... Let me press him on this. Hold it. Now tracks me as a very suspicious mistake. But yes, I can see how you'd be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry I only just remembered that table clock. Not a table clock. Okay. Okay, I think this is what I object to. Because it's a statue, right? Objection! Uh, objection! Yeah! Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was the statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? The you, 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 with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are running around leaving scars? Something jar of hearts. Just answer the question, Mr. Sart. Hey, I saw it there, okay? That was a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, the statue is indeed a clock. The deck is a switch. You just tilt it and says the time out loud. And it doesn't look like a clock. I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. Hmm, I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems? Yeah, I, I do have a problem with that, yeah. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony, which I shall unravel. The only way he could have known that weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand, and he didn't enter the apartment. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the witness testified he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm. Indeed, that... That is the definition of a contradiction. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. We were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh, oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. Yeah, I'll do better than that. I can prove you're the one who killed her. You struck her with a clock and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Oh, oh maybe it is. Clack. Order in the court. In the basketball court. Somebody bring out the basketball. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sard, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. Burned! That's why you were so certain about the time. Uh, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Hmm, just look at the witness's face. Oh, look at his grimacing. The grah. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with a clock? I, that day, that I, I never. Look, I, the clock, I heard no, I mean, I saw, I saw, 
Yeah, when I, mean, I didn't need a, I didn't need extra hair. You shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you. It was him. I tell you, I saw him. He, he killed her and should burn, burn, give him death. Hmm, that's quite the thing to say in a courtroom, Mr. Sart. Order, order in the court, I say. Your, your honor, a, a moment, please. There's a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. I, I'd be afraid. The way that he acted, it was kind, kind of suspicious. Mr. Wright. Your honor, you claim the sound of... Blah, blah, blah. You claim the sound of the victim. Not the victim. Boy. You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? My whole case is riding on this, like a... A horse rider on a horse. I'd better think it through carefully. Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sad heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Ask the... <laughs> no, try sounding it, the clock. Let's sound the clock now here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. That certainly is strange. A strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. He's always thinking about what ways he could possibly be used as a murder weapon. So we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's exactly three hours early. It's 11.25. Ugh. Sorry, I had, I had a hairball. Ugh. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sart heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sart, try to talk your way out of this one. And also, pull your shirt back up, man. Get yourself together. Ha, ha, ha. You forgot one thing. Now, what's he talking about now? Well, it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow. Uh, it proves it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? Can't prove that. You don't have a case. Hmm, he's right. How am I gonna prove that? Hmm, darn it! I was so close. Mister Rat, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Uh, yet, yeah, uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately. What? This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sard. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal or criminal. You lawyers are all slime. Good. Wait, what? Did I mess something up? Yeah, sorry, Larry, I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. What? Not so fast, Mr. Sard. <laughs> Me, I, I mean Chief. Listen up, Bright. Don't throw this one away. Not like this think. Like the thinker. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Oh, she was going to Paris, right? So she would need to account for the... Oh, and she was arguing with Larry the day she left. Or where she was going to leave. I know that... Yes, okay, I feel smart. <laughs> can you think of a reason? Yeah, I can think of... Yeah. Wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence? Of course, there's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Oh, tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence. Uh, yeah, the passport, right? Yeah. Uh, just take that. Take that, yeah. I just <laughs> throw it at the judge, like, yeah, take that, judge. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in the apartments were wrong. 
Proof enough for you, Mr. Sat, or should I say Mr. Debit? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Well, the. <laughs> the accused can no longer stand, so he must be innocent. Uh, order. Order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness. He, uh, was he has been arrested. That has been taken away, Your Honor. Hmm, very well. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I have to say I'm in pro- oh. <laughs> Sorry. Er, uh, sorry, I was doing impersonation of you. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Confetti! Yay! Wait, those guys don't look too impressed on the sidelines. They do not look too impressed about the confetti. And with that, the court is adjourned. Nice. We did it. Our first case. It turns out that Frank Sott was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sad let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Lested, Mr. Sad grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. And he painted the floor. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby No. 2. Ah, <sighs> well, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Uh, th thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. And I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this clad, imagine how Larry must feel. No, oh, my, my life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Snap out of it, man. Stop it's twinkling. Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. What? Good. Are you right? <laughs> no, I'd be bad, bad, bad. Bad dog. Go, go sit down in a corner. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. Oh, but my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was... Oh, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Uh, uh, Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry... Wait, his name is Larry. <laughs> Harry Butts, innocent. Uh, oh, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate dinner, movie, my treat. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh hey, here, take this, the murder weapon, I guess. It's a present. A present? For, oh, to me, uh... For me? Wait, wasn't this the, the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You made this? Oh, thank you, I'll keep it as a memento. Yeah, that's a pretty darn good job you did there, Larry, of making that. Didn't know you were a sculptor. <laughs> Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you want to just cry? <laughs> Where? Oh. Larry. Are you so sure? Excuse me? <laughs> I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. No, you don't gotta sympathize me. It's okay. No, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Isn't that left, right, right, left, left, right? <laughs> like, being in a car, like, telling him what direction to go. I guess he could just use a DPS. Or not a DPS, a GPS. But, like, go right, right? Or, like, go right. He's like, you did? yeah, yeah, I'm going. He's like, no, like, go the direction right. Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? 
<laughs> oh yeah, right. What the, what the heck is he talking about? Uh, the attorney badge. Uh, no, the, the statue. She kept it. Take that. Take that. Check this out, Larry. Proof pos. What? Proof positive. You aren't just some chump to her. Oh, what about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She was killed with it. <laughs> Doesn't that make you feel happy? And she took it with her when she traveled, though, right? Oh, wh whatever. It's probably just need a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of that what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. I hope that made him feel a little better. Yeah. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you kind of should, because you're like a lawyer by profession. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. Some things never change. And we never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we could do is believe in them. Even if they're actually a murderer. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. And believe in the heart of the cars. You activated my trap card. Don't, 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 don't. Okay. All right, listen. Learn. Grow strong. Sounds like a school motto. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry. His name is Larry. <laughs> Is a objection. Take that. You're saying a part of why you became a lawyer is because of him. Uh, yeah, in part at least. You have to tell me about it sometime. Maybe over drinks. Hmm. I guess so. And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, "Oh, gee, Nick, it's good to have friends." But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us unless you count the clock he gave me. Huh? I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. The end of the... That was the entire game. Thank you so much for joining me on this series. Oh, here we go. The second episode. Saving. No. Yes. Bring, 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 bring. Hello. Bonjour. This is Maya. All right. Oh, whoops. Sorry. Oh, what voice should I give Maya? Hey, ho, ho, ho. Hey. Again, okay, I don't want to do the same voices that like the kind of like the Game Grumps did, right? Oh, to think of an original voice. Mm -hmm. Let me consult my voice or my list of voices. Mmm. Yoda, kind of. Her voice would be. Hey, Maya, it's me. M Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry, I've been so busy. How have you been? Oh, I think this is Maya talking. Well, well, lonely. And it's all your fault. No, it's... Yeah. <laughs> I can already tell it's not going to be good for my throat. Maybe I could be Michael Caine from Christopher Nolan movies, but kind of. Well, no, that's, that kind of just sounds like 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 Phoenix Wright, kind of. But lonely, it's all your fault. No, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'll, I'll settle on the voice eventually. I, 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 Oh, I, oh I, can, or I can be Kermit the Frog. Oh, I've been great. I'm finally getting in. <laughs> she does have green tags, too. I don't know if that's, uh... If it's gonna stay like that. Yeah, I've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. Yeah, I know. Or, maybe all my voice is mixed up. Uh, uh, I know, I know. You want me to hold evidence for you? Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. There's a lot of bees. They're, they're heading to the courthouse. Quick, everybody, take cover. I, I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. Yeah, I got you. So what is, what is it this time? It's a clock. A clock? 
Yeah, it's made to look like this, that statue, the thinker. And it tells you the time. I thought you might like it. Like the thinker? Okay. Uh, you always like toys. Hey, I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. Now, now, you know I'm only teasing. Oh, I should probably tell you the time. Oh, the clock isn't talking right now. That's not working. That's lame. I had to take the clock out. The clock work out. Sorry. I put some papers inside it instead. Yeah, papers. Is that the evidence then? Hmm. Well, um, there's a possibility that might turn out that way. Yes. Can you come by the office tonight, say nine, to pick it up? I'll be in a pre-trial meeting until then. You're okay, sis, but I expect dinner. Something good. I like burgers. I could go really good for a good burger. I mean, with the flies. Okay, okay. We'll hit the usual joint. Alright, it's a deal. Alright, sis. See you soon. Yep, I'll be waiting, Maya. Oh, that's an unpleasant beep. Conversation records September 5th, 9.27 a.m. September 5th, 8.57 p.m. Fei and Co. Law Offices. Now, Miss Fei, I'll take what's mine, the papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I... Oh, I'm sorry, but I don't... I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Fei, you are a poor liar. I don't know who's talking. Or I do know who's talking, but I'm going to pretend like I don't. Because I'm still trying to think of a voice for him. Oh, I see right over there. It must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. Nom 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 nom. How could you know? Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Uh, gathering information is my business, you see. I... I should have been more careful. Ho, ho, ho! Oh, oh, oh. right here, Miss Fay. I'm so very sorry. But I'm afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence. Farewell, Miss Fay. <sighs> but, no, 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 don't you do it. Oh, no. Oh, there he is. Kind of looks like a character out of Yu-Gi-Oh. Or just, it's pretty much just out of any anime. Red, white, blue. A voice. I mean, he's not that old. I, I could still give him an old voice. No. Doesn't seem right. Oh, say, can you see? By the door, maybe I give him this voice. Oh, hello. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, yes, be 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 like a Mr. Burns voice. It kind of sounds like Kermit the Frog. A little bit. Oh, that, oh, that amphibian will get him yet. No, oh, I'm late. Ha, huh, that's strange. Guess the chief left without me. She said her sister was coming over, so we should all go for dinner, see? Yo, what's that smell? P.U. Blood. Bia. Maybe she's in her office. I better move. That smell, blood. <laughs> oh, sis. Someone's there. Oh. Yeah. Chief. 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 I'm sorry, I gave a terrible voice for emotional moments. <laughs> Who are you? What? What? What was that? Did she collapse? Oh, yeah. Strange girl dropped down cold. I left her lying on the office soda. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. Aww. Uh -huh. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then all too quickly it began to fade. So finally, she was cold. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. Sorry, there's no laughing matter. This is serious. This is tragic. Chief. Some shards of glass are scattered on the floor. Seem to be the remains of a glass light stand. Chief, it's hard seeing her like this, but if there are any clues here, she was struck on the head with a blood object. Very similar to the first case, she probably died instantly. The thinker lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. The thinker added to the core weapon. Hmm, there's some glass shards near the chief's body, must be pieces. Yeah, okay. Nothing else that seems like a clue here. Hmm, oh, there's a piece of paper. 
That piece of paper! It must have fallen from Mia's hand. What could it be? We'll find out what it could be on the next episode. So until next time, remember to stay cool and I'll see you guys in the next video.